Hey everyone, it's Isaac from True Champion Gaming, and as the thumbnail shows, I got a Water Merlin decklist for you guys. I know you guys love this decklist, and this is the Water Merlin decklist that just actually came uh, first, or sorry, second place in the California Regionals with uh, the one you know playing the deck. The pilot of the deck is Cameron Parker. You might know him as Roomba in the Discord. He's an active participant in uh, many of the Discords. You, you've probably seen him if you're in the main, in our own. Um, he's always there chatting it up, and he was uh, after this top of. Uh, the regionals he just played in. So uh, let me just jump in the deck list. Uh, so of course it is that water uh, spirit. Uh, we are on Lorraine start, not Rai start. Playing a level two Merlin into the level three Merlin. So uh, you know this is the standard. Usually the standard for Merlin. Uh, you get you know when you go to level one, you get that free uh, zero costing sword, which is really nice when you're starting to do your ascension package. So uh, of course that is you know the strength of Merlin. Also you know gaining the level every turn, single turn, or and then you know every other turn gaining that draw. And then of course it is playing that sword of seeking. So uh, you know it isn't playing any of the other ones. Sort of sometimes you see uh, adversity out of some of these Merlin decks. This one's not running that. It's running the sword of seeking because it isn't running any sweeps. So there's no real value in running adversity. It is playing nullifying lantern. Uh, you know this is water Merlin, so it has the fracturized lantern combo. And that deck, you know, the the erupting decks, the fire graveyard decks are very potent, very strong. And so this just nullifies them and really kicks them down an auction, makes it much harder for those uh, fire graveyard decks to win. And so just throwing this into your main, taking only one material slot instead of like Grail Lantern uh, is really, really nice. We are playing GCR, you know, you want more draw, we don't need to play Lantern, we have the Fracturized Lantern, so GCR, very good. Playing Majestic Spirit, we are playing the Incarnate uh, Majesties or whatever, and so, uh, you know, having a deer in the main board that's a big body and easy to get out is really great. We are playing Scepter of Lumina. This is more draw, more damage, really good. Bring it out in the mirror matchup, or at least in the water matchup. And uh, you can get, bring it out in your main, which is really, really nice. Like I said, you don't always need to go for it for the damage, but the drawing two cards is huge too. It is playing Erendite. This deck runs a lot of floating memory. I didn't see exactly how much it was, but I'm pretty sure it was close to 20. Uh, and so, you know, and we have other ways to get, you know, uh, uh, floating memory into a graveyard faster, and so Aaron Dyke can be either a finisher or just a very strong mid-game uh, weapon to bring out to you know to help poke for lethal. And then we are playing Drawn Blade. This is very common in uh, almost every Merlin deck. You know, you bring this out, uh, you get to draw a card, you get to ascension before your recollection. Uh, bring this, you know, put this back. Bring out. Prismatic, which the deck is also playing, and this combo is just very, very strong. So um, that is the material deck. Before we move on to the main deck, here is a couple words from me. Hey everyone, it's Isaac. If you want to support us, get merch, or pre-order the next set from GA, then you should check out our website. Over on our website, you'll find stickers, t-shirts, playmats, and material deck sleeves, and the next set of Grand Archive for pre-order. So make sure to check that out. Also, if you like content, then you should check out our Patreon. Over there we have an exclusive podcast series, extra gameplay videos, and articles written by us to help your competitive gameplay. In any case, if you like what we do here on YouTube, then don't forget to like and subscribe as it does help us out a lot. Thank you. Okay, so let's talk about the main deck. We are running, you know, four dungeon guides. This is very standard for Merlin. We want to get to level three Merlin and start doing level, you know, three Merlin things with crux and, you know, gaining levels and gaining extra draws every other turn and, you know, bringing out that majestic spirit and doing pen dragon and ascension stuff. So dungeon guide, very good for, you know, leveling up fast. It is playing Frostworn Paladin, four of. Uh, like I said, the deck has a lot of floating memory. And so getting this effect, it becomes pretty easy. This becomes a 3-4 body with an intercept, and it also draws you a card, uh, you know, replaces that, you know, that floating memory instead and turns it to a draw, which is very, very nice. It is playing four Tide Diviner. This is not always a card we see in water. Like I said, you, you know, this deck is running a ton of floating memory, so it makes sense to want to run this. You are getting a ton of levels, so you know, in a late game, this can mill a bunch uh, and hopefully hit a decent amount of floating memory, so that way you can ascension into a sword. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, into the uh, Arendite Blade. Um, this is very, very good with that combination. It is running three Resolute. Uh, you know, want some protection against uh, allies, those swarm decks are going wide. Um, you know, Resolute's a very strong card that we see a lot of in Merlin decks that are going very, uh, very uh, level three very fast. It is running three, uh, four Frostbind. 
you know, this can negate any card activation. If you get to you know, Merlin v Merlin, if you're in that matchup and you get to level three before them and you have, you know, three cards in hand, you can sit on this. It makes it very difficult for them to be able to, you know, do their stuff. And, you know, if they do go for it, you can punish it by, you know, using Frostbind. I apparently had an extra Frostbind in here. You can get that out of there. We only need four. Five is not legal. Uh, Song of Frost is also a four of. You know, this is just in case we don't find our, and I'll put up here, Fracturize. Um, you know, against those really, really big swings, Song of Frost is really good for that. Um, you know, uh, if we're doing, if we can't find Fracturize for the Fracturize Lantern, Song of Frost can stop one of those really, really big attacks. Also, really important thing to know about Song of Frost, this is a really important combination to know about in any deck. Uh, if someone is playing, someone's planning to attack you, or sorry, you're planning to attack them, and they cast something like a Resolute. Let's say you have a board of a lot of uh, uh, allies on board to swing, maybe a couple pen dragons, dungeon guides, whatever it might be. Uh, usually, it's more important than like a you know water ally deck, but this can come up. If they, if you swing with an ally, they Resolute. You can Song of Frost your own ally's attack, and because of how uh, Song of Frost reads, where it says. Uh, and the combat phase, that means all triggers and stacks on the uh, effects, or all, all the triggers and activations and material, materializations on the effects stack then become just like erased. They get banished. So Resolute actually doesn't go off when that happens. Uh, this is important to note, uh, like I said, in those uh, ally decks more often than not. But this uh, deck does have some attacks, like we'll, I'll show you here in a bit. Uh, but, you know, it could be important for those final swings that you need to push through and they try to resolute to protect themselves. You can nullify that. And, of course, like I said, Fracturize. Uh, you know, this is part of our floating memory package. Um, but also, of course, you know, Lantern Fracturize. You can Fracturize their own swords. You can Fracturize, you know, Prismatic if they forget, you know, leave it up and unprotected. Um, very, very strong card. And, of course, floating memory. Uh, so that's the first four. We do have another four of Refracting Missile. So um, something that Rumba was, I believe, mentioning in our Discord was about how good this card is just to, you know, cast. It deals one and becomes Floating Memory. Fast Floating Memory is so strong. It's why some people do Fast Cure, which, you know, heals you four sometimes, but some people will just cast that at the end of their turn to, at the end of the opponent's turn, sorry, to, uh, even if they're not recovering, just to get that floating melee drop so they can use that instead of the cards that they want to keep. So very strong cards just because they are fast floating memory. This deck doesn't run any other fractals. You might be able to get your own fracturize and you know, create your own fractal, so maybe it's doing like two, I highly doubt three, um, but that's still very, very okay because all you care about is that it's fast floating memory. So another eight there, putting us to 12 floating memory. And then it runs four Savage Slash. You know, once you are a warrior, either level one or level three, this is also more floating memory for you. Um, it is called, you know, a little bit of attack damage too, maybe early getting, to help you get into your level two, whatever it might be with that floating memory. Uh, like I said, here's another four, so I believe we're up to 16. We're not stopping there. We got Chilling Touch, a four of, uh, you know, usually this is just a turn one play along with this or Idle Thoughts. Idle Thoughts is actually pretty nice. I'll talk about that in a sec, but you know, these are usually your turn one plays to get your either Paladin online or, you know, maybe this is, can be just you know, a little disruptive for your opponent. And then Idle Thoughts, you know, maybe set up your deck for either Tide Diviner or, you know, again, just that turn one uh, floating memory to either level up or for that pen, uh, I said pen dragon, sorry, I meant Frostworn Paladin. Um, so, I think we're up at, uh, at, at, at 16, this puts us to 24, I believe, so that's it for the floating memory package. Uh, like I said, I think there's a, at least 24 floating memory there. And now we're getting into our late game package, which is the four of Incarnate Majesty. Does play that at four of. Uh, I don't think uh, Water Merlin really has any other you know ways to deal with big stuff, so getting their own big stuff on board would really help with that. So it plays a four of, of Incarnate Majesty. Plays a three of, of Pendragon and a three of, of Ascension. Uh, you know, it, it seems like it's wanting to play on that Incarnate more, so obviously that's why the lower counts on these. We don't have ways to bounce this. We don't have, uh, this is actually it for the Crux package. We don't have a way to grab these again. Um, so this is just for that little combo, that little bit of damage, um, where it might be for uh, bring out, you know, bring out Prismatic and, 
and you know gaining that value for you know if you get to fire a water or sorry, fire a wind, you're either milling them a card from their from their uh, memory or dealing three, and you're almost always guaranteed guaranteed to draw because you are water. So that's that there. And then finally, the last cards of the deck are three sudden steals to help push that extra damage. You know when you're in the late game Merlin, this is just free five damage. When when swinging, you know if you're on your even counter, it does you know yeah seven damage. You have a sword that's eight. Or if you had Prismatic, it is a, uh, with that bonus, uh, is 10 damage to be able to kill off something like an Incarnate, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Majestic Spirit. So uh, that's it there. And then finally, we'll move on to our Material deck, which is, it does run Tithe. Uh, you know, this deck doesn't have a ton of draw, so, you know, something like a Fire uh, deck that's drawing a ton, or maybe even a Wind Merlin, or again, you know, an Arcane Rye that's drawing a bunch. This is a very good card. It does run Tariff Ring, uh, you know, kind of the opposite side of sometimes this, uh, I feel like, of Tithe Proclamation is uh, Tariff Ring. You know, for those aggro decks, you know, maybe we're against Wind Aggro and you don't need that Nullifying Lantern, this is a great card to put in instead. It does Viridian, run the Viridian Protective Trinket, you know, water versus water, that can be a very slow, very tough matchup, especially if they're constantly countering all the stuff you're playing. So playing stuff like this can be a very uh, helpful thing. And then it is running two Seeking Shot. I actually, here, and I think I hear everyone here at True Champion Gaming actually really likes this card. It's a one cost deal for two, specifically a human ally. This can kill a, uh, a Ghost of Pendragon, it's kill a Frostworm Paladin, kills an Ace, and kills an Arthur, obviously, and Gildas. So, uh, kills a lot of those big health units that we see often. Even kills a uh, Bedivere, which is because he is human animal. Uh, so, very, it comes up very often and it's something that you just put in the deck to help push you know, through those taunts, or sorry, intercept uh, allies. And then it does run three Blanche. Uh, this is, I'm assuming, for that Arcane matchup, for those uh, Fire Merlin matchups, and maybe even some of the times those Erupting and or, you know, sometimes Xander, Fire, uh, fire Aggro Xander can have a lot of early, uh, or just a lot of non-attack damage in general, and this can help stop that as well, so. That's the deck, guys. I think I went through it pretty fast here. <laughs> Sorry about that if you didn't catch it. Uh, you know, if you have any questions, uh, you know, I'm sure Roomba would love to talk about his deck list. Don't worry, we got, we got the okay from him to uh, post this right after the event. I was watching some of his games on stream. They did stream it, so uh, definitely you can check that out too. Uh, I'll try to hook, uh, put a link to that uh, stream in the description so you guys can go back and watch some of the games that occurred there. But in any case, guys, hope you have a great rest of your day. Peace.